بعد الفاصل يتحدث جيرمين جاكسون عن قصة اعتناقه للإسلام وقصة زيارته ومايكل لمنطقة الخليج العربي تابعونا did a, um, a live feed for, for CNN from Bahrain, and I had some of the friends and uh, family members around me, and we were going to go live, and Larry says to me, yeah. Jermaine, who are all these people sitting around you? And I said, these are people from the Middle East to show their support for my brother. And he said, well, we have a problem. I said, who has a problem? He's loved by, by everyone. He said, well, my producer. My producer says if we show these people, our viewers are going to want, are going to, want to know what do they feel, how do they feel about the soldiers being treated in Iraq. So I'm saying, Larry, what does it got to do with my brother? Yes. But see, that goes to show you in these major, major news media outlets, it's controlled by what's mm -hmm. being said. So we look at this country as a democracy, but at the same time, it has a bit of di dictatorship, really. They're being told what to say told what to say and 99 percent of the people believe this stuff so did michael like it in, in the gulf region he was there with us for more than one year he loved it because he 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 told me it was different and he loved the call of prayer and he he, he just he loved, loved the call of prayer yeah and, he loved, and he loved the peacefulness it's yeah. peaceful and and you know the way the middle east is portrayed in this world is like it's it's like is war and people ducking bombs and this, this and that. That's why it disturbs me. Even during 9-11 when I spoke out about yeah. how um, me being a, a Muslim doing... So many people in the Middle East want to know your story. Sure, why uh, you converted to sure, Islam. Sure, sure. Well, um, it happened being around children being around just innocent children. I made a, a trip to Bahrain in 1989, and I was with my friend Ali Gamber, who's just the most wonderful person. Yeah. Throughout all the friends I've had in Hollywood and all over the years, he's number one. And I say that in all honesty be, because he's a good soul. And I was around some of his fam family members and kids and stuff, and. And they were so sweet and so kind, but it was what Michael talked about, about the pureness of kids' questions yes. and the laughter and everything. And I said, are all these children Muslims? And he said, yes. But e even before then, I knew that there was something in my soul. And I think it, knowing that when we were brought as a people from Africa to the States, we were originally Muslims, and it was this white slave message that put the Christianity yeah. on, on us. And, and so I basically was going back to my roots, but at the same time, it felt good. It was a feeling that I can't explain, but we drove from Bahrain to Riyadh, mm -hmm. and, and I saw prayer on the side of the road yes. during five, five o'clock, then we got, got to Riyadh. We made a flight from Riyadh to Jeddah and I yeah. went to to Mecca and it was just the most wonderful feeling because I felt so pure, so special and I knew that was the connection because I had grown up as a Jehovah Witnesses knocking on doors yeah. and the doors had been slammed in my face but and I, I, I remember all, all of this because my brother Tito and I were, were, um, were the two going to knock on doors but I never felt a connection until I embraced Islam be, because there were always questions in my mind. Um, how many of us 
are going are going to heaven and 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 what do we have to do to yes. to get there but they could never really give me the right answers and I didn't feel complete from the answers uh, when I made my journey to the Middle East and I embraced Islam it came full circle I called my mother and I said um, I'm very happy I'm a Muslim mom. she had already known there, oh. there was a journalist from the UK that followed us yeah. and some that was working for Gulf News yeah. and she reported everything and and I and saw what me did she tell you when she knew she I've seen her since then and she said well I did the first story and um, it broke here and I don't know how they broke the, the story but I felt wonderful and I felt yeah. com complete and I felt that I was ready for whatever yeah. ready for after the 11th of September so many Muslims in the US were not able to say that they are Muslims what do you have to say about that see I, I think well, I know God is always one way, Re regardless of whether you're being accused of something, you never denounce who you are. I was very proud to say that I was be because I know how the system works and, the and how things are being said to sort of switch powers. But at, at the same time, there were a lot of Muslims here that didn't even want to to say that they they were not just here in the UK as well and mm -hmm. I was busy during that time talking to young Muslims about mm -hmm. just just continuing on their prayers and I spoke mm -hmm. at the G was it the GPU in in yeah. the UK of uh, just thousands of, of Muslims and they saw me in the big brother house doing my prayers and so after Michael read the books about Islam what did he tell you well Michael I really feel that Michael was looking for that divine feeling and and I brought him a lot of books from Saudi, I, I brought him books from Bahrain, I brought him books from a lot of mosques yes. in Bahrain and he, he read them all yeah. and I just wish that he would have made that announcement, maybe he made it in his soul but Mm -hmm. At the same time, we want to hear it because that was my protection, and I, and I felt that would have been his protection as well, Islam. He told you that one day you're going to hear it, or one day he will embrace or convert? Did well, he tell you that? Well, he or showed he, us by yeah. loving that region and spending a lot of time in that, in that part of the world and having a lot of friends in that part of the world. and. Uh, and it's just very, very tough because he's being pulled upon and asked to do this and that. And this, he had a tough life. He had a very tough life. So now your kids, are you raising them to be Muslims or you're giving them the freedom to choose well, whatever I, they, uh, they like? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of tough be, because they're not with me 100%. They're uh -huh. with their mom, but I, I would love to raise them. As Muslims, yes, but but my wife and I are going to have um, many more. We're definitely going to raise yeah. them, inshallah, as Muslims, inshallah. Yes. So, how does it feel now for you being the voice voice of millions of Muslims? I think if the Western world really look at Islam for what it really is and stop trying to put this terrorist word with Muslims and Islam the world could be a much better place really because it's the most pure religion ever and, and my challenge and the task for me is to try to to be the best person that I can possibly be to others and, and to myself uh, but when you see a lot of the movies in Hollywood when they when they when they portray Islam and, or they'll have someone from the Middle East he has to be a terrorist and this and that and they know what they're doing, but at the same time, that's not true Islam, not at all. Thank you so much for giving us this chance. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. إذا رغم رحيل مايكل جاكسون فإنه يبقى بفنه وبمساهماته الإنسانية يبقى معنا إلى الأبد. أشكر لكم طيب متابعتكم لهذه المقابلة الحاضرة.